Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins. I am a Linode Developer Advocate, and what we're going to be doing in this video is checking out this application right here. I do not know how to properly pronounce it. W-G-E-R is the application. What it is, is a community-driven free and open source fitness tracker. If you've ever used applications such as MyFitnessPal or really anything like that, you are sending sensitive data to a third party. A lot of the times when you're sending it, your data to that third party service, you are agreeing to a terms of service that allows them to use your data to their benefit. With a free and open source application like this, you have the ability to host it yourself. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video, showing you how to easily set this up on Linode. But before we do that, we need to check out some of the features and whatnot. I actually have my instance set up right here. You can kind of see the difference. You're literally cloning their website or using their exact setup when you host it yourself. So this is their main website. They have over 20,000 people. My website, I have one person, which is me. There we go. Went ahead and logged in. I have not put in any data, but I'll give you a kind of rundown of what's going on. Here under our main dashboard, we have options to add a weight entry, set up our nutrition plan, or we could go to workouts. We have no workouts found. We can add one now. Click on add a training day, and you can see it gives you kind of descriptions of what you'd want to do. So for example, if this was a chest today for me, and I wanted to do chest on Mondays and Fridays, I'd save that. And then what I could do is use this to actually plan my exercise. So I could type something like pull-ups and it does have a lot of pre-existing workouts that you can use. You could set up all the repetitions and the weight you plan on using and you can obviously change all this and whatnot on the go. So we could do five. Let's say I wanted to take a hundred pounds off my weight. I'm American so I'm going to do this in pounds and then I could go save that and now we have our workout right there scheduled ready to go. And you can see on the machine is actually more of a back and not a chest exercise but it gives us the uh, exercise over here, what the muscle groups are. Overall, it's a really nice free and open source application. And if you are a trainer or something, we could always download the PDF of this, give it a download, and then we have our workout here. So if you are wanting to build one of these for somebody else using this software, this is a way to go about it. If I go back to my homepage and just show a demo of a weight entry, I am uh, a little heavier than I should be. So I'm gonna put in 260 there and then click on save. You could see that weight entry pinpointed and then you could track it you'd get a nice looking bar graph as you proceed with that under nutrition plan you could set up meal plans and it gives you a really nice rundown of the nutritional data you can add your custom diary entry and for example if i wanted to add a meal we can give a approximate time so let's go pm breakfast save and then from there i could actually add items to the meal and use this as a tracker in that regard if i look more we have a bmi calculators ingredient overview under training we have workouts or schedules calendars gallery so you could upload pictures if you would like to if you want to do a before after pictures and use this as a way to upload it that is something you could do and of course you see down here it says get on google play they do have a phenomenal application that you could use with this which makes tracking and actually using it incredible because if you're at the gym it's much easier to pull out your phone than to have to remember everything go home log on to your desktop and <laughs> log things that way. So with all that, what I'm gonna do is show you how to get this set up. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and install this on the node. This is the GitHub page that we're gonna be cloning the repository from. It's basically a simple Docker Compose YML and some additional configuration. We'll be jumping back to this page in just a minute. We're gonna go over here to the Create Linode page and we are gonna to want to set this up with a domain name. If you don't know how to use the Linode Domain Name Manager, we'll leave some documentation down below. It's really easy to get set up and doing this allows you to use these API tokens, which these right here will allow us to save a lot of steps when connecting a domain name to a Linode. I'm gonna go ahead and call this one Workout just so I know where or why it was created. Scroll down, Create Token, and let's copy that, and I have saved it. Basically using that will create our A records for us as well as some configuration in the actual Linode with the host files, things like that. And being that this is running on Docker, what we're gonna to wanna to do is go under Linode, Create, we're gonna to go to the Marketplace, and we're gonna search for Docker. Here is the container that we are going to be using. Here is the marketplace application we're gonna be using. Basically, this will just give us a server with Docker, Docker Compose, 
some other dependencies pre-installed. So down here, we're gonna create our limited sudo user. I'm just gonna call it the name of the application, gonna give ourselves a strong secure password. I do recommend setting up SSH public keys, but for this demo, we're gonna skip that. Here is we're gonna paste in that token. And for this, we're gonna use the subdomain workout. And this is going to be on the hopkey.net domain name. And then we're gonna put in our email right there. We are not gonna need MX records for this. But honestly, if you do plan on using public registration, you might want to go ahead and say yes for these. So with that under images, I generally just go with Ubuntu because that's what I'm familiar with, but you could go with Debian if you would like to. For region, you're gonna to want to select the servers that are closest to you. So I'm gonna go with US West. And then under the Linode plan, I'm gonna go with the Nanode one gig. This is a pretty lightweight application. And if you do want to add other uh, Docker containers, things like that, you could always upgrade this as you see fit. So I'm gonna give this a label. I'm just gonna call it workout. And then let's give ourselves a root password. There we go. So now we can fire this up by just clicking on create Linode. And then it's gonna go ahead and provision and get all set up. Then we can see it's booting here. One thing that's pretty cool, we go ahead and launch the Lish console. What this is gonna do is kind of give us a live preview of it actually booting and running through the scripts that are part of the Docker marketplace image. So we'll be able to see when we can log in and actually see exactly what it's doing when it's doing it, when it does prompt us to log in, that's when we're gonna be ready to go, just like this. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to our local SSH client. So I'm gonna open up a terminal. And now from here, let's SSH in. So we're gonna copy our IP address here and then SSH into our user at that IP address, hit enter. Yes, I'd like to continue. Type in our password, hit enter. And then there we go. So what we're gonna to want to do, well, first I'm gonna not, and then once you're in, you could do some general server maintenance, such as actually updating your system, things like that. I'm gonna skip it for this demo for the sake of time. So we're gonna come over here, go to the GitHub page, and what we're gonna do is clone this repository. So we can pull the config files and the Docker Compose YML. Go to code, give that a copy, head over here, and now we're just going to git clone the repository, hit enter. It's real small, so we're done. Now if I ls, we're gonna have a Docker folder. We go ahead and cd into that Docker folder to kind of see what we got going on here. We have our config folder, we have the docker compose YML and the license and readme. Now, if I go ahead and jump into this docker compose file, kind of get a good idea of what is going on here. And honestly, there's not gonna be anything I'm gonna need to change in here. We have the environmental file, which is actually all the variables are gonna be in the config uh, production environmental file. We have our volumes, which I found the best look, kind of just leaving this as is. If you're doing this on a pre-installed instance, you may want to change the port if you're already using port 8000 but for the most part, everything else is looking good. So let's exit out of there and we're going to CD into our config folder and we're gonna nano into the engine X config. Now for this, we're not gonna change anything either. Everything here is gonna be fine for a basic HTTP connection. If you do want to add SSL certifications and all that, they do have some information on their GitHub down here of how you would go about deploying and configuring that with some actual examples of how to configure this specific Nginx configuration and some additional tips and tricks and some things you're going to want to do in the other configuration. Since for this install and this demo, we're just gonna go with a basic HTTP as this is gonna be more of a personal instance, I can skip this for now. But one thing we are gonna to want to do is nano into that uh, prod.env file. Here is all of our settings. So for security's sake, I do recommend changing Changing the security key and the signing key. There's a link right here to a generator if you want to generate those. Again, for the sake of time, I'm gonna skip that for now. I will be changing my time zone real quick. I am in America slash Los Angeles, at least the time zone. Here, this is some of the reverse proxy stuff. So you, if you are setting that up, you're gonna to want to enable both of these options. For static files here, you're gonna have the best look setting these up. So I'm gonna get rid of those and I'm gonna get rid of the S on HTTPS. And then you're gonna to want to put in your domain name here. So for me, it was workout.hopkey.net and then just repeat it here, hopkey.net. And now if we go down, there are other settings. So right here under application, you're gonna to wanna to keep this the same. This is where they're gonna be syncing the uh, exercises from. We have allow registration. You can disable that if you'd like to allow guest users, uploading videos, age requirements. One thing I'm gonna to want to enable is sync exercises on a startup. So that's all ready to go right away for me. I'm gonna keep the background sync enabled. So it keeps that running once a week. We have download ingredients, but the only other setting I'm gonna to need to change, here's the database stuff. I do recommend you change the username and passwords here. Um, but the only thing I'm gonna change for this demonstration is gonna be right here, the site URL. So we're gonna go workout 
hopkey.net. Obviously, use your actual URL. And other than that, everything's looking good. We have some email settings here if you're going to enable that. But I am not. So control O, output that, control X. And now we're going to CD back into our Docker folder. And from here, we're going to run that Docker Compose. So we're going to do sudo docker-compose. And we are going to up. Enter, type in our password, hit enter. And now this may take a little bit for the very first time because it's gonna need to actually pull and extract all those images. And of course, sync up all of the uh, images and whatnot. And now it is spinning up all these OKs is definitely a very good site to see. And when it is completely done, we're gonna see it present our uh, URL to us. You can see it's syncing everything, language, categories, muscle groups, things like that. And now it is updating just about everything. So what we're gonna to want to do now that it's all spun up is copy this URL right here and make sure it works. So let's jump over to our web browser, open a new tab and paste and go. And there we go, we can see it's working. We have some input back here of it actually working. So from here I could click register, give myself a username, type in the email, type in our passwords and click on register. So there we go, there's our dashboard. We now have an installation on our very own Linode so we could track our workouts, weight, things like that with a free and open source application. Of course, I'm not running in detached mode, so if we go ahead, hit Control C, it's gonna begin shutting down all of our containers. And then if we want to, we can rerun this Docker Compose with dash D to be detached. Give it a minute to actually launch these containers. And there we go, now we can actually leave our instance, close the terminal, and this will continue running in the background. And with all that again, there's gonna be a link down below for the $100 60 day credit. So that way you can get started, build your own little fitness tracker, or really do a whole bunch more over on the node. And with all that, anything we mentioned will be linked down below. I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.